there. It's Sean from the Velvet Attic here again. I just wanted to pop in quickly and make this video just to introduce you to our new product. Very excited about this product that we print uh, called Silk Paper. We are launching this product and it will be available in our stockers shops very soon. Um, I've taken one of our new tropical designs. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to raise it up so you can see how pretty those are. The lovely cockatoos. Um, that's part of our range. We are busy designing uh, exclusive designs for the Petit Rouge range as well, uh, which are releasing. So the whole point of this video was to introduce you to the product and show you how easy it is to actually apply this paper. It works really well on furniture, boxes, trays, wooden canvases, you name it. Uh, we can apply it on that. It's a very lightweight paper um, with a smooth backing and the front you'll actually when you feel it you'll feel that it's actually rougher on the printed side um, and it's an opaque paper which I think is the most exciting part about this paper you can apply this paper to any dark background um, as you apply it you'll see when I demonstrate it it takes a transparent look but as it dries your opacity comes back so very exciting paper I've got a few samples I'll show you of off cuts that I was making of our other tropical paper with our toucan and I love the red and the vibrancy it's very tropical looking and the beauty of this paper is not only can you apply it the way I'm going to show you but for you very uh, experienced data purists <laughs> who have the patience you can cut it out as well with craft knives and scissors and apply it if you'd like to go the decoupage route. Today I'm going to actually demonstrate putting that piece down but I will also demonstrate the alternative to applying it. So one of the boxes I made just quickly to show with our tropical design was it's just a CD holder box. Um, you can see I applied it as a full sheet over a painted black background I don't know, you can see how you pick up that slight tinge through the white, but you still have the vibrancy of the color. And that's really so exciting um, about this, or how this paper works. So let's jump into it. Let me show you what we do. I'm gonna just do it straight on a board. I've clipped a normal MDF blackboard with some of actually Velvetatic black chalk paint, but you can use any paint from acrylic to chalk. So there's our blackboard. Uh, I'm actually going to use some of our new cockatoo paper. So that'll be exciting too. And you'll see that when we sell our silk paper, you have the uh, option, which I would recommend, of purchasing our film, application film, for applying this paper. So move your board aside and let's take our paper. And I'm going to just take, you know, I, I'm just using a round brush because I find it easier to sh trace the outline of what I want to do. But really, you could use a flat brush or a filbert or whatever your heart desires. Just a soft nylon synthetic will work. Um, not really a hardware brush. You want to keep something small that you can actually outline because the design is quite a smallish design on here. Our sheets come in A3, as I mentioned, so um, keep that in mind. So you can full wrap them. I think one of the things I really need to mention here as well about our papers, when we design, when I designed these, um, I went for seamless. Basically, a repetitive pattern from four directions. So that means you can actually cover very large areas, <coughs> excuse me, from four different angles. So if you had two pieces of paper, they would line up identical on this side, this side, top, bottom. Let's say it's round, you want to work from the center going outwards. You can put your paper out in four directions to be fill that round area. Um, the difference is, if I was doing a full surface area, I would be inclined not to cut a straight edge. What I would do though, because it comes with a margin, because remember when we print there is margining involved, you'll have a white margin around your paper. I would leave that white margin and then I would fluff it up, which I will show you how to fluff it up. And then I would join those fluffy bits together and that's how you won't see your joins as obvious, obviously as a line 
um, and that's where it really works nicely. So let's take, I hope I'm centered under this camera, let's just take something along the lines of, I do like how this branch is coming out of the cockatoo and around the leaves like that. So let's just take that. I'm taking normal tap water, I'm wetting my brush and now I'm going to start running around. So I'm going to come in on the branch there with the water, come around, just keep getting water. It's going to absorb through. You can see what it's doing on the camera. Take it around. Try not to do dead straight. Um, the eye is always attracted to dead straight and we don't want anything perfectly lined and so let's go around there. I don't really mind if I get some of the other plants on, so it's not really an issue for me. Um, so there I'm going around and I'm going to come from this side down under the tail. It does bleed a little bit in the water, as you can see, but it won't be excessive. Just make sure, you can see it's a bit dry at the top of the head there, make sure you have got enough water. Okay, now I've got to just show you, make sure I keep under this camera. Um, this is where you will now start tearing where that water is. And that's your guide for the tear. That's how you know that when you're tearing, it's um, quite safe. You're not going to worry that you are going to damage your prints because that water helps you. You're not going to be straining your fingers or nails, making sure you don't tear into a little bit. As you can see, I'm just using flat hand coming around my design. If you're doing a big area and some of it's starting to dry and it's not tearing as easy, just wet it again. Okay, so there's it out but like I said to you I'm not fond of straight edges so the same thing when you work with the solid sheets on your tables bear this in mind your straight edge will show straight to straight so I'm gonna fuzz that edge and this is what you would do on a full sheet of paper I'm just literally going to take <laughs> wrong end of the road I'm just gonna take the water and I'm going to just wet the end. Uh, I'm going to do it there. I think you'll see that better. You can see I'm waiting it there, right? And then just take this part, you use your little bit of nail, and just fuzz that edge out. Like so. And then that paper is ready to go. Like so. If I didn't want this part of the flower I could obviously come in there around the branch and just cut it out there because he's still sitting on the branch or she <laughs> he or she and um, but this one I'm actually just going to push it to the side I think that'll look quite nice coming off the edge like if I was doing a piece out of the edge of the box or the tray or something like that okay so make sure all your fluffy edges are up and out And we take our film. So you're going to take the application film like so. Sorry, mine has a bit of a crease in it. You're going to place your print upside down on there. You then take, you, this can work with tap water. Um, with painting, I generally use distilled water, but you can use tap water 100% no problem. I got myself a little spritzer bottle. But really, just take a big brush if you don't have a spritzer bottle and just, this is where you'll wet the paper. So I'm going to spritz the water onto my paper. I'm going to saturate it, literally. And then I'm going to take my wet big brush and I'm going to just make sure that all those little fluffy edges are pulled to the outside and that this paper is wet. Okay, so our paper is ready. Let's just move that aside. I'm not going to worry too much if this is per se wet. Now I'm going to apply it with our Velvet Attic paper glue. 
but I know not everybody has velvet acti paper glue and lots of people have their favorite brands of chalk paint or uh, varnishes they use this can work with a water-based varnish whether it's polyurethane or a, just a straightforward craft varnish um, it can work with your Mod Podges as well um, I just prefer the the clear glue the reason I like my clear glue is that once my my uh, paper has dried it has a lot of absorption properties still to it so if I want to glaze over it or I want to do washes of watercolor over it on my edges I can just play with it so if you can imagine taking some beautiful which we will have um, old document looking script um, you can actually make it look very old world using colors chalk paint colors just thin with water washed over um, and antique that paper to the way you would like it so taking the glue I'll just check out um, my little blue tapes just to tell me where I am on the screen <laughs> so I'm gonna take some of the glue there you can see I'm just gonna scoop it out and I'm just gonna coat my area where I want to put it this is what you would do with your varnish or your other glue or your mod or whatever you're using make sure you coat enough area underneath just a generous coat it doesn't have to be running thick thick just spread it out and that's it now make sure your paper is still wet if it started to dry and it's going white around the edges you need to just spritz it again now you turn it over and you place it where you would like it like for example i wanted it near the edge so I'm going to place that on my edge there and then you can rub it with your fingers and just work it out the plastic will actually give more protection to it but you'll find that this paper is really durable and hardy and you can do a lot with it now you can also especially the decoupage people we have rollers <laughs> So you can get your roller, you get the shorter ones and the medium size and wider ones, just rolling from your center out if you really want to make sure it's all down, but it will go down quite easily. I think where the roller is your better option is when you're doing a full sheet, uh, multiple sheets on something. So when I like covered the box, I did a full wrap and if I was doing a big piece on a table, a full A3, then I would use the roller. Now you pull gently and you make sure it's down and you pull your plastic film off. What I then do to preserve my plastic film, I just take my water, because remember I've had a bit of glue on there, and I just wipe off that excess and you'll be able to reuse it over and over and over again. In the packs that come as an A3 size, cut it to the size you want buy two packs if you don't want to cut it keep an A3 now you go back to your big brush and your glue and you're just going to brush on your glue from the center out as I'm doing now now obviously it's quite wet from the paper and stuff like that so you can take your paper towel and get that excess water or glue on the edge out and off but I don't worry too much I'm more interested in what's going on with my paper the glue itself well in my glue will dry a matte perfect matte um, varnishes if they satin will take on a satin look um, but that's not the end of the world because I think once you or well, I know once you varnish your piece everything is going to take that satin finish so that is literally put down and put aside to dry but I'm going to flip my board around and show you how to do the cutout one as well now just as a little bonus extra so turn your board around I'm going to put it over there for now remember I showed you at the beginning of the, the video I had pre-cut that I said that's for our avid decatures <laughs> who love to cut out I just thought I'd go ahead and do it um, if anything I might have a little problem there by this little leg but that's not the end of the world because if I have to I can apply him on his own later even with or without the plastic um, so let's give it a bash and let's see how it goes okay, my plastic on. there we go 
but I see these things. <laughs> Bring this back just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna just put it over there for now, like so. Spritz. Make sure it's saturated, you'll see the print through there. Okay, I went and I, my brush still has glue on, so let's just take this little one. I'm just going to quickly brush and make sure everything's pulled down. You don't want any bit standing up because it could make a crease as you lay it down. So just make sure everything is lying as it should, like so. That's perfect. Um, then I'm just going to take it. I know I've been in the glue, but I can replace this form <laughs> and clean it. Um, now, same thing. You're going to apply your glue again. I'm just going to do this one on this side of the board. So let's just put our glue back on. Make sure you cover enough area for your picture or your piece that you're putting down the paper. There we go. I'm now going to turn it. I'm going to watch where I want to put it. Like this. Press it down gently. Obviously, the black on the cockatoo and the black background initially will look a bit lost, but it will come back when the colour comes back. And I'm just going to roll gently because remember, I cut this one out. I got a little fragile piece there, but I don't foresee a problem on that. Just make sure we get everything down. I'm going to pull it up actually from this side, not from the fragile bit pull it up. I'll just put the plastic aside for now. And there we go. Back to our brush with some glue. And we're going to brush it gently across where the fragile bit is. I mean, don't go and rip and flip it because you'll damage it. <laughs> okay. I'm not too worried about, like I said with my glue, I'll just spread it out. Make sure we put that plastic that's still covered. All the excess is spread out perfectly. Nice and smooth, just a nice application. Very gentle, I'm not pressing hard with the brush. Right, and that's now going to dry. I just want to show you how our cockatoo, the white one we did first, is literally all the colours coming back now. So that's very exciting on it. So let me show you a couple of other examples that I've done to give you an idea. This here, we're actually releasing two very dusty pink toile, French toile um, papers for Petit Rouge exclusive designs. Um, similar to this, but not exact. It's actually a bit different, but the coloring's the same. So it gives you an idea there, you know what I said with straight edges. This is just a test board to see how the color, how the color actually comes out, um, which is stunning because you just get that, just the per perfect pearl pink color. Um, and then you can see a little bit of mottling of the black background through there. Then I'm going to show you this then I'm going to show you this board. So let's have a look at this. These are also samples. Here's some of our tropical paper I showed you with the toucans. This here, you'll see there's a sheen. I actually did with a varnish. Um, so what I did, um, I like to test with other brands as well. So this is actually a Petit Rouge Lalaka. Lalaka. <laughs> um, that I used. And I put the varnish on and I put the paper over and um, I put the varnish back over and it, it looks stunning and it worked beautifully. These are pieces I just did of roses, a uh, custom order that um, I helped someone with for a, a Beatrix Potter theme. And so that's just a little Peter Rabbit in that. Um, and there's a little cart post towel, all on black. This, as you can see, once it dries, you are not going to um, have any color going through. So what I thought and what I think is the really nice thing here is that with this fluffy edge, 
if you want it to blend through with some of your black over it and bring it into a piece you'll have that you'll have this lovely texture to your your paper the paper texture onto your piece um, something different to just a normal paper per se um, it just adds to it it's it's something we can play with we can put colors over we can glaze I could glaze over this car pastel with a lovely raw umber um, glaze mix or just thinned paint with water you can choose how you want to do it um, so these are the silk papers as I said that are all coming out great excitement uh, let's see if you can just see there you can just ignore this was a test thing have a look there you'll see I played with uh, turquoise chalk paint chalk paint our one I thinned it with water um, Lumiere basically our color into our light gray peri into our um, darker gray la noblesse and I mixed them and just blended them through like a watercolor there's another little button I tested that already had a black print to it um, but it's just a lovely effect but you could also cut it perfectly around if you don't want the fluffy edge so that's totally up to you versatility you get to play you get to do your thing and put it all down there um, what you do need to do though is as soon as your image well not as soon but as soon as you're finished with your piece that you've done um, and apply the paper finish your glazing or painting or color washing or whatever you're doing over it then just go ahead with your normal sealer craft sealer or polyurethane water-based polyurethane and just seal over it to protect your paper and yes if you have any questions feel free to contact us at the velvet attic um, like i said it'll be in the petit rouge stockists as well their exclusive designs and then of course all my other stockers will have from our range of designs as well so thank you for watching my video uh, it's a bit of a winged video <laughs> uh, always a little laugh or a giggle but i hope to meet you guys and thank you again for all your support